Hey friends, today I am in Epcot and I have dining reservations at Le Cellier, the steakhouse and restaurant underneath the Canadian Pavilion here in Epcot's World Showcase. I am so excited. I haven't been here for years and I could really go for a good steak. So let's go do this. We have a couple minutes before our reservation, so it gives us time to walk around and explore the Canadian Pavilion a little bit. It is so beautiful, especially the garden area down here. It's so fun to be exploring all the restaurants at Epcot again. It's 2021 now, and because of the pandemic that we're in, it's giving us a new perspective on all these restaurants. That's why, if you notice, I've done the beer garden, I've done Teppanito, I'm doing Le Cellier today, and I'll do all the other sit-down restaurants that are in World Showcase. That's my goal, to get them all done, just so we can start off the year right. Look how beautiful it is down here. It's amazing, isn't it? I absolutely love it. I love the flowers and just the whole entire garden. There is so many things I want to show you in the Canadian Pavilion. So if I don't get to it now, we'll show you after we have dinner. But this is just amazing. I always like going back this way because they do have Canada far and wide. And I like the little bridge area. Look at this. So fancy. We're going to see some waterfalls soon. Wow. Ooh. You're going to get a little misted up here. Look at everyone's getting misted. <laughs> Maybe we'll actually go back that way and do Canada Far and Away after dinner itself. But it is getting time for the reservation, so we better get on over there. Here is the restaurant itself. I am so excited. It does get a little dark in there, but it's so amazing. Like most of the restaurants in 2021, all of the menus are actually a QR code, so you scan and check. They do have menus posted on the outside, but I don't know if they're accurate because the menus have changed in almost every single restaurant. But I'll show you just in case. Right here is that menu that I was talking about outside. Oh, actually you might not be able to see much, but there's the entrees. We got a prime ribeye steak, the New York strip, the filet, some Asian impossible dumplings, a sustainable fish. This stuff is so amazing. I am I'm pumped. I am so excited. I'm checked in, so I'm going to see if maybe they have a reading area inside. And our table is ready, so we're going to move down into Le Cellier. Told you, it gets really dark in here. Now that I'm at my table, I can take my mask off. It is so awesome down here. Actually, I like the lighting. It is like the perfect dining lighting. Like, it really sets the mood. All the tables have candle lights, and you can see all the light fixtures are actual maple leaves. It's very cool in here. I also like the carpet. Obviously, this being a steakhouse, we're going to be getting some steak. But because we are in the Canadian Pavilion, I think I need to get myself a good Canadian beer. They have Le Fay du Monde which actually means end of the world. That's what my waiter just told me. And then of course, Moosehead and Molson and Labatt Blue. I think I might actually get this because it's on draft. Yeah, I think we're gonna get an end of the world draft. I believe last time I dined here, I had the filet, but this time I might actually explore and get a different steak. I do know the prime ribeye actually looks phenomenal. And I might actually go in that direction. I know that's a shocker because everyone always says, if you're gonna come here, get the filet, get the filet. But I don't know, the prime ribeye is calling my name. It actually looks like the filet is still more expensive. It's $59. The filet comes with the mushroom risotto. And then the prime rib actually comes with fingerling potato salad, bacon, and then wilted spinach capers. Ah, it's going to be a tough one. I can also get some enhancements. Ooh, I might actually want to get the maple wispy glazed Brussels sprouts. That sounds amazing. I also just stumbled upon the fact that they have a Le Cellier signature poutine down here. Here is the Le Femme du Monde, the end of the world beer. Cheers. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, wow, I love it. Wow, that is so good. I decided on getting the prime ribeye steak 
The reason why is because I've had the filet before. The filet is only seven ounces and the ribeye is 16 ounces. So I went with that and I'm going Pittsburgh style. And then instead of getting Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna get the actual Le Cellier beef bolognese poutine, which I'm excited to try. And I subbed out the mashed potatoes for the fingerling potato salad. So this is gonna be a good meal, I am excited. A nice little fun treat just arrived at my table. They actually have a bread service here and it's a special bread service. Look at this bread service. We have a pretzel roll, sourdough, multigrain, and then it comes with a maple brown sugar butter. That is amazing. First, I'm gonna try the pretzel roll and I don't think I need the brown sugar butter for that, so. That is amazing. And now, I gotta try this brown sugar. I do. The brown sugar butter is amazing. But the pretzel roll is the best so far. I do wanna kinda try the pretzel with the brown sugar butter. I think we're gonna do it. Maple brown sugar butter. Oh yeah, this is gonna be super sweet, but I'm so excited. While I was snacking on my bread, the poutine has arrived. Look at that. I am so excited to dive into this. It looks so amazing, doesn't it? I'm going all in here. Oh my lord. This is absolutely amazing. The french fries have the perfect crunch to them. I absolutely love it. Wow. I'm hooked now. I am 100% hooked. Look at this. Oh. The only issue I have is if you're dining by yourself, which a lot of people don't buy dine by themselves. You know, I'm just out here enjoying some food. It's too much food. And like, if you get that poutine, uh, like it's gonna be hard for me to eat this all and I want to, but like I don't wanna get full on bread and fries before the steak comes, but I wanna keep eating it because the french fries are still crispy. And if I wait, then they're gonna get soggy. So like I'm really torn because delicious steak, crunchy fries. Which one? I don't know. But that is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Now I'm just gonna wait for the steak to come. I'm not gonna eat all the leftover bread or french fries because, you know, like I said, I wanna have enough room to eat all of the steak. That's what I came for. That's the main course. And here it is. Look at that, baby. I am so excited. We are gonna dive right in here. Oh, perfect. This looks perfect. Cooked just the way I like it. I asked for it Pittsburgh style. Charcoal on the outside, a little bit rare on the inside. I'm gonna eat it without the mashed potatoes first, but usually I like to dip my steak in the mashed potatoes. I know a lot of people like to do that, but you gotta taste the steak on its own first. So, first bite. It is so beautiful. Look at this char. Oh, I can't believe how amazing this is. It's like, it's, it's perfect. Perfect. Now we gotta add a little mashed potatoes to the steak. Once you get down to this small portion of the steak, you don't want it to end, so you start making your bites a little bit smaller each time. When you first start off, you go big bites, but like, I don't want it to end, so I'm gonna keep making it tinier and tinier just to make it last longer. I am very happy I decided to go with the ribeye instead of the filet. I probably would have been done with the filet already. This is cooked perfectly. The char is amazing. And it's just overall such an amazing steak. I love this whole entire atmosphere down here. It really sets the mood and it makes it 10 times better. But 
all things come to an end. I miss it. That first bite though, it reminded me of Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. Like I feel like I could have probably taken a Polaroid picture and kept it in an album. So amazing. <laughs> but now I think I'm done. I do want to give you like a tour around the dining room a little bit before I head out. It's actually a very tiny dining room. It's got a nice little fireplace. I like the doors and I just love all of the different maple leaves and all of the like just pretty Canadian woodwork. And then as we make our way out you see all the different artwork and it gets like super super bright but like I said it's dark down there. Look at that on the outside. But wow coming out of there I feel so full. Definitely gonna have the meat sweats but we're gonna walk around the Canadian pavilion a little bit maybe check out Canada Far and Wide, which is basically their show over here, and just enjoy. It's such a beautiful day out. This is where the show is at back here, and we're gonna get a little misted here as we walk past the waterfall. I'm already prepared for this. Oh no. Looks like we're just in time. Zero minute wait. Hello, hello. It's so funny, the last time I was in this theater, they weren't actually doing the show, they were using it to house, I think an apple orchid, uh, it's like a festival booth, where they sold different ciders and stuff. I remember that. Legend says the word Canada comes from Kanata, the Huron Iroquois word for village. And although those early villages have grown into our modern provinces, Canada has remained a cultural mosaic. A place where you can keep and nurture your language and traditions while embracing the future. There's an official language spoken here. Quebec City is one of North America's oldest metropolises. A perfect blending of old world meets new. Its southern neighbor, Montreal, blends over 350 years of multicultural heritage with stunning architecture. And I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge our deep love of a home. For many Canadians, it's a way of life. And a way of life for our dentists, too. Yeah. Well, that's just a glimpse of our Canada far and wide. We hope you know now why we love it so much. Not just for the natural beauty, but for the people who make it so special. And the best way to really know this country is to experience it yourself. So come visit our Canada. actually really beautiful. I want to go to Canada so bad now. It looks so amazing there. And also I learned a little bit because I remember watching The Office and Michael Scott went to Canada and he was calling it Canada and I'm sure it was like just like a goofy way that Michael like Michael Scott speaks but he was actually kind of pronouncing the word that it was actually derived from Canada and I thought that was really funny because he's like how you say Canada? How you say? Wow, it's so beautiful up here, isn't it? All of the shops are actually closed down, but I just like being up here. There's nothing open. Like, this is not open. That side's not open. So there's not a lot of people up here. I like it, though. I am really enjoying all these restaurant excursions and the different countries at World Showcase. It's so fun because we get to eat at the restaurants, embrace their culture and culture and food, and then also just kind of enjoy all of the different pavilions. 
it's really entertaining and it actually enhances the experience a little bit I feel like it I don't know what do you guys think I feel like you get like the total package when you dine at one of the sit-down restaurants at Epcot's World Showcase the trading post is still closed over here I remember coming in here and actually getting maple syrup hard candies also, I want to keep in tradition where I show you guys one of the cool hidden Mickeys that's actually in whatever pavilion we're dining at. So I want to show you a cool hidden Mickey here. I'm not going to tell you exactly where it's at. I'll just point the camera in that general direction for a little bit and let you guys just kind of look. And then you guys can let me know if you see it or not. We are looking at the different totem poles actually. And if you can see the hidden Mickey, I know it's a little bit dark, but... I'm looking at some of the totem poles here in the Canada Pavilion. If you can see the hidden Mickey, let me know. I'm going to zoom back out so you can see exactly where we're standing. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you want me to do more videos like this, let me know. Maybe you can help me decide which one I'm gonna do next, like which country or which restaurant I'm gonna to go to or World Showcase. I've already done the beer garden in Germany, Teppanito here in Japan, and it would be nice to see what you guys say. So leave me a comment below. And if you haven't checked out those videos, check out those videos. It was just like this one. But now I wanna move along and I ran into my friend. Who, oh, where? Jackie, super enthused. Hey. I like your shirt. Thank you. I like your shirt. Yeah, we didn't dress to match. We actually, we had two separate plans today. So you came from Hollywood Studios. Yeah. And now we I'm here. Doing your thing. And, and we both wore Epcot Spirit jerseys. Except for you know, yours is nicer. Great minds. <laughs> it is. It's nicer. Mine's newer. Yeah, I need to get a new I just one. I recently got it. I've got blue paint on mine. It's a memory. It is a memory. Making memories. Taking pictures is. <laughs> Now we're gonna move along because I want to head over to the Mexico Pavilion. I heard a rumor that all of the Cabaneros are missing, so we want to ride the Grand Fiesta Tour to see if that's true. Is it true that everyone left? They're all gone. Es verdad? ¿Dónde estás los caballeros? All gone! We know Donald is already missing, and they replaced him with just a sombrero, but Jose and Panchito are supposedly gone missing too. So we gotta find out. We have to find out. We have to get in line. Yeah, we have to investigate. You're not enjoying the Mexico Pavilion unless you're dancing as you're walking in. Question is, is if all three caballeros are gone, will there still be a concert tonight? We're coming up on a fiesta. <laughs> Look at that. They are, they're cardboard cutouts. No animatronics. fun to ride the Grand Fiesta Tour and we talked to a cast member and they were just down doing some refurbishment and maintenance on the animatronics. I don't know about Donald though because he's been missing for a couple weeks now. A fiesta with a sunset. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I ran into some more friends. Beth and Mike, villains and vice. <laughs> And we're actually gonna head on over to France because I hear that the Ratatouille merchandise is actually out and I'm fogging up. Look at me. I look like Odin. <laughs> oh wow, it's like a magic trick. But yeah, as I was saying before my glasses started fogging up, we're gonna head over to France and check out all the new merchandise and also probably get some more drinks and something else to eat. It's just a beautiful night. It's a nice night for a walk. Mind if I join you? It went from like a beautiful sunset to 
complete darkness already but we are in the France Pavilion and first I want to find the Ratatouille merchandise I don't know if there's anything I would buy myself but it'd be nice to show you guys I did see a little bit of it it's really cute and it's all themed around Ratatouille's adventure so we'll see what they got look at how fancy this is they have a little chef set that is amazing and then Remy's Ratatouille Adventure Ears. They're actually little rat ears. I like this a lot. These are really cute. Then they also got some shirts here, a dress, a hoodie, a chef's coat. They even have some magnets and phone cases with Remy in France. Like, well, in the France Pavilion, not actual France. Ooh, and even a little Gusteau's like keychain. I think it spins. I don't want to touch it. Oh yeah, it does spin. At first, I thought, wow, maybe these won't be that popular, but it looks like they are popular. They're about to sell out on the shelf, and people are lining up to actually cash out, and they all have Remy ears. Even Jackie's getting on board, and she's buying some Remy ears. But look, they're almost all empty there, and the line to actually cash out is going up, and then inside the exit way of the theater, and then back down to come all the way over here. But nobody wants Chip! I have Chip, actually. But that is much too long of a line for me. And I think I'm actually going to go and try to get myself the chocolate croissant that I keep on missing. Because that's always a long line. The line this time is actually going pretty quickly. If you remember last time I was here, I wanted to get the truffle croissant because it looked really good. But the line was going all the way up on the bridge. So I decided to pass. Now, I got back in line to do the same thing. But my friend Beth is telling me that the truffle croissant is basically like a mushroom? Mushroom truffle, not chocolate truffle. <laughs> that is not what I had in mind. Don't make that mistake. I was about to make that mistake. But the fun thing is, I think I'm still gonna make the mistake. <laughs> I have to try it now, You're even though I know fine. it's bad. I don't know though, I'm, oh no, I don't know. It's I don't. gonna be bad, it's, not, it's just not dessert. I thought it was a dessert. I feel like a fool. <laughs> Honestly, I have to say I really thought it was gonna be like a sweet croissant But now it's more of a savory croissant and I just need to know like now. It's like more about just knowing So here is the croissant right here And I decided to get the frozen French martini just in case I don't like the croissant I need something to wash it down with but don't you think this sounds like a like a dessert croissant kind of? Oh, looks like we're getting the martini they assemble the martini glasses to order. Very fancy. At least you know you're getting a fresh glass. <laughs> At least you know you're getting a fresh glass. I like it. <laughs> Ooh. Uh-oh. What's the fanciness happening on top of mine? I like it. That may look pretty for you. Thank you. There you go. Ooh. Here it is. The Croissant Truffle Noir. I'm excited to try it. I really thought this was like more of a chocolate, which I don't understand why I thought that. Maybe it's the way it looks. Maybe it looks like it's Yeah, it does look like a, but it has no chocolate in at all. It has no chocolate, but we're going to try it. I'm so excited. Beth is like <laughs> laughing. She was thinking <laughs> how funny. I can't wait to see this. Oh boy. <laughs> it's not bad, right? What do you mean? Hey, you got the croissant. Just a few reminders. I don't taste anything bad. It's just not chocolate. Mm. It looks like chocolate. So, all I tasted was croissant at first, but then when you get to the middle, I don't like it that much. I mean, it's kind of like deceiving, but I'm going to eat this whole thing. I'm not going to waste it. I mean, I'm going to eat it. That's a really long one. Did you just say That's Sante? Sante? Sante. We're going to try to cheers our French martinis. <laughs> I need to wash down the uh, truffle from the middle of that croissant. <laughs> Sante. Sante! Sante! Hey! Mm. Ooh, that's sweet. It's like a creamy, oh, like this is delicious. Yeah, yeah, I like this a lot. Yeah, I'll buy you another one. You can take a look at the inside. This is where... <laughs> all of the um truffle actually is you can see it in there it's kind of strange but like i said it's going down 
This time, I'm gonna actually eat the side of the croissant where I'm gonna get most of the truffle. Hopefully, I don't drop my croissant. No, you almost made me drop my croissant. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do it. I tried. Wait, hold on, hold on. I tried. I'm sorry. I, it was good. Some people like it. It's just not my bag. I knew what I was getting myself into. Beth gave me the warning. And it's not like it's a bad thing. It's just something that I know I probably won't like. A lot of people always ask, like, how do you always like things? It's because I tend to steer away from things that I don't like, but I just wanted to be adventurous there. You know what I mean? I was really fooled was thinking that it was adventure. chocolate. Yeah, like I really believed it was like a chocolate croissant. I have no idea why it does not say chocolate anywhere, but I really thought that just a couple seconds before I order it. And then my friend Beth told me, and I was like, you know what? You're gonna try it anyway. So at least I know. But at least I can say the frozen French martini, top notch. Thank you. But with that, we are closing down Epcot. What an amazing night. It was so fun just hanging out with friends, having some drinks, seeing the missing three Cabaneros, and just enjoying Festival of the Arts. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye!